Hello, and welcome to Shane's Microscope. I'm Shane, and this is my microscope. Let's take a peek. Today's sample is a stage micrometer. I wanted to talk about the scale bars that I put on my videos and images, so I'll be telling you about that while I show you how I make my calibrations. So the initial inclination I had on getting a microscope was to just put magnification power on my images, and that would be better than nothing, but honestly it's really not that useful. Why not? Because that's just the notional magnification of my microscope. It leaves out some very important factors, like the actual magnification of my microscope, the magnification inherent in my recording device, and most importantly, the magnification provided by your screen. And there is nothing I can do to account for that last one. So an image that's calibrated to be 100 times magnified on your smartphone might be 500 times magnified on your computer monitor. There's simply no standard viewing size. And that's why I use a scale bar. The bar tells you how long it is, and this is true no matter how you view it. One tenth of a millimeter, if you magnify it, it still represents one tenth of a millimeter. I do still show the zoom factors because that's important information if you want to make inferences about depth of field and stuff like that, but mostly the scale bar is what's important. So how do I get the size of the scale bar? It's simple, I measure it. Why not calculate it? Well, I'm sure I could get close that way, but if you buy an objective that claims to magnify images 40x, I don't believe that to be the absolute truth. I have manufacturing experience and I know that real things are built with a tolerance. Obviously different manufacturers will have different tolerances. A Zeiss objective marketed towards researchers is probably labeled quite accurately. But for hobbyist grade equipment, an objective that comes out to 39 or 41x is so close to 40x that there's no way they would trash it. They would just label it 40x and ship it, no problem. And honestly, that's okay. It just means that I want some empirical verification. So here's a perfect example. These are images taken through 10x optics from the same supplier. The hardware looks very slightly different so I'm thinking they might come from different manufacturers selling to the same supplier, but they're branded the same. And the results are close, but not identical. So clearly they can't both be a perfect 10x. And again, that's totally fine. I just measure the scale bar for the optics that I'm using. So once I've got all of my images, I just bring them into PowerPoint. All I really need is the ability to draw a bar. So I just draw a line that covers so many millimeters, and I put that into my info box. You have to be consistent, of course, you know, going from the right side of a mark to the right side of another mark, or left to left, whichever. So then I just save this as a PNG and use it as an overlay. Then no matter how my images get viewed, they always show the correct scale. Well, I hope that gave you some insight into the importance of scale bars, as well as why and how I use them. Alright, well I think we'll leave it there for the day. Thanks for having a look with me. Until next time, keep on peeking.